controversial new book claims that all men are designed to cheat. The author, Professor Eric Anderson, says that as sex dwindles in a long-term relationship, most men will view cheating as a logical solution to meet their problem of sexual desires. Mm, Eric joins us now along with uh, Agony Aunt Denise Robertson. And, uh, and as we debate this issue, you can uh, tell us who you're siding with by voting on our worm. That's it down the bottom there. You can see it uh, at the bottom of the screen. Go to itv.com forward slash this morning and have your say and you'll be able to see that move as we go. So you say, Eric, and welcome. Lovely Thank to you. have you here. Uh, monogamy is sexual incarceration. Well, what I say is that the young men that I interviewed, 120 undergraduate men, suggest that monogamy feels like sexual incarceration to them. Yeah. What they desire is monogamy at the beginning of a relationship. They believe in monogamy. They don't want to be that guy that cheats. But in time, they desire to keep the emotional relationship with their girlfriends mm -hmm. or boyfriends, and they have stronger sexual desires for others outside that relationship. So this is a very complicated situation because biologically they're strongly desiring sex with other people, but they've been socially constructed to be monogamous. So what are you saying? Is this um, the excuse for this? Could be purely genetics. It's not that far since we were all cavemen, and uh, and so this is we're just acting like the animals that we actually are. Basically, this isn't to say that men were designed to cheat. This is to say that monogamy was never designed to be good for human beings. We don't fit well with monogamy. <laughs> but animals do have partners for life. Very few animals have partners for life. I the made vast the list majority of animals. I made the list. Well, you can morning. come up with 12 or 15. I bet yeah. you don't have more than 30 on that list. Well, no, I've only got about eight. There but, you go. Uh, <laughs> but I admit, there's grey wolf and swans and condors and barn owls and angel fish and ospreys and prairie voles. I had a look this morning. But, and uh, I could but, spend but, the next 10 minutes filling the list with animals. But who don't. Don't. But we aren't animals. We do have some control of our behaviors. The problem is we've been socially constructed not to act on our sexual desires for other people. Does it work both ways? I mean, you're talking oh, about absolutely. this. absolutely. So, so do you think it's the same for women as well? I mean, should we all be getting married, reaching a certain point, and when we decide our sexual desires, then be very open about the fact? And would that make our relationship stronger and healthier? Is that what you're saying? This isn't to say that all men are cheating and women aren't. <laughs> women cheat as well. We know, for example, in the United Kingdom that 72% of married men have cheated on their married partners. 70% well, of married women Well, you say that. Maybe we're cheated. just better behaved over here in the 70 UK. 70% no, of married no, no, no. women Hang on. have cheated. A survey by Relationship Counseling Service Relate found 32.4% of men have cheated. And in fact, women 34.4. So we're slightly higher on the women's side of things. Surveys but will women... vary greatly. From the time we started doing these surveys in the mid-1940s, there's been huge variance in this. And that's because it's very difficult to get people to admit to a stigmatized behavior. The reality is divorce is over 50%. Psychologists will tell you that nobody divorces before cheating happens. And the height report in the United Kingdom shows 70 and 72% of cheating. Whatever those percentages are, it certainly indicates that we desire monogamy emotionally. We <laughs> desire to be in a relationship, in a couple relationship, but we also strongly desire sex but with other people. But can I just people. say something? Of if course you, you can. If you, you cannot have your cake and eat it, right? Yeah, of course you, you can. You cannot have the emotional bit, because if you go off and have a dalliance with someone else, you'll come back and that emotional bit won't be there. You'll have your sex fulfilled by various different women you want to go to, but when you come back home, the emotional side will be stripped bare. There'll be nothing left, because I'll be sat there going, oh, and okay, that is, and I that now is, can't be in love with you anymore. And that is exactly the problem. That is exactly the problem. With your I'm theory. Not, I'm not, not advocating. It's not my theory. This is just the reality. This is what men say. Denise, let's come to you, please. Go for it, Denise. Well, you surveyed 120 young men. No, I, interv I interviewed 120, 120 young men. But they formed your and I used, statistics. And I used 400 other research articles in my book. So okay. this isn't just me saying like this. Like the Height Report. This is sociologists, this is biologists, this is psychologists. Like the Height Report, like which the Haidt was report, a load of Kinder's rubbish. Report. Well, you might say well, that. Well, I don't a, even know what that is. Years and years and years ago, a woman called Cher Height brought out a report which said we're all sexual animals and we're all at it all the time. The fact of the matter is that monogamy has persisted not because of social convention but because it works. It's like democracy. It's not perfect, but it's better than the alternatives. That's why most people want a monogamous relationship. And I've had, you've interviewed 120 young men who, of course, want to be at it every minute of the day with every woman who walks past. I've had, over the course of my career, something like a quarter of a million letters. And a, an awful lot of them, Eric, were dealing with the debris of people 
having dalliances. And you know, oh, of course. you make it all sound so grown up. You'll have this lovely marriage, 2.4 children, you'll be emotionally attached, then you'll go out either the husband or the wife, and you'll have your little bit on the side, and then you'll come back and it'll all be lovely again. Well, in the real world, sometimes the little bit on the side doesn't want to let go of you, and they put bad things about you on Facebook, and they park outside your door, and they stop your wife in the supermarket and tell her what her husband was like in bed with them. You know, that's the reality, and the children in that kind of situation are torn apart. Isn't this all because we're terribly British? Because in France, if there's, there's a number of French people who are watching this saying, well, you know, the, the, the wife and the mistress, it's all perfectly normal here, you know, it's happened at very high political levels, everybody gets on with it, they all seem to work. I would really like to know what's going on in the minds of those smiling women while they're very rich and very important husbands are having it off with someone. <laughs> Denise is making three fundamental errors here. The first is she's conflating monogamy as a practice of restriction to being married to just one partner with monogamy as a restriction of sexual fidelity. The second mistake she's making is assuming that I'm advocating for cheating. What I'm doing, Denise, is I'm getting into the minds of men and I'm telling you why men do cheat. I'm explaining how is it men go from a disposition of not wanting to cheat to eventually cheating on their partners. And this, of course, has repercussions. The answer, though, is to allow us to examine for sexually open relationships without stigma. That way, human beings have more opportunity to make choices well, that, that suit here, their but, own but needs. You mentioned stigma because, Denise, uh, in the past, um, sex before marriage, there was a mm -hmm. stigma surrounding mm -hmm. that. Homosexuality, there was a stigma surrounding that. Yes. All of those stigmas have begun to melt down. What's to say that in the future, an open marriage, the stigma surrounding that, wouldn't actually dissipate? Because those particular stigma hurt. They were bad. They were wrong. They caused unhappiness. I'm saying there's not, you know, people cheat. We don't walk past them in the street and shun them. We accept it. I spend my life accepting that people cheat. But I still say that at the bottom of their hearts, most men and women, equally, because I get letters from men who are gutted when they find their wife's been unfaithful. Of course. Too. I think at the bottom of them, most people want to have that one-to-one -one relationship that will be there for you in sickness and in health, which is more than your little bits on the side will be. They want that. That's why it's no, endured, absolutely. because they want yeah, it. Yeah, we're, we're not disagreeing here. And we're all it. human, and sometimes Would, we fail. Could, but could, the question is, Denise, are you opposed to people being in an open sexual relationship where both, where both partners agree to have sex no, on the side? There, I am not the keeper of anyone's morals. So, ever. If you, so if both parties agree, then that's if then. If they then, can do we it go. without the, hurting anybody, yeah. well, absolutely. I'm all in favour. But the, the, the mistake Eric's making is that this has always happened. Of you, course. You, you how, is that, how is that a mistake I'm making? You, that's you, what I'm saying. You said um, uh, earlier that you know we ought to have grown up conversations. It's quite insulting to people to think that they don't have grown-up conversations about sex. Mm. Well, my research shows that they're not having conversations about, well, for you, example, it's important, it's important in that the you get. Place. We're looking. I'm looking at this worm here, so it's quite important to to let uh, to let Eric have his uh, some more of his say, just a, a little bit here. What about what about um, uh, cyber sex? Um, what, 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 do, do guy, can guys use use that now? Indeed. To, uh, uh, the reason that I interviewed themselves. young men is because we already know that adults cheat and adults cheat at very rapid rates. We know that married couples cheat at very high rates. What I was interested in doing was finding out how has the digital generation changed cheating and monogamy. And this brings up the fact that there's all types of new ways to cheat. Sexting, cyber sex, having internet conversations while masturbating, all types of activities that go on that can be concerned cyber cheating and there's very little discussion in the relationships, with, whether gay or straight, with these young men. And I asked them... Did they, count, did they count that as cheating? Well, I didn't count that as cheating as part of my research. And they didn't know whether it counted as cheating or not either. And that was very interesting to me. And that's one of the things I hope my book does, is open up this adult dialogue. Because couples aren't talking about, does it count as cheating? If you're masturbating while talking to somebody on the internet, does well, it and count? And your wife's downstairs. And your wife's downstairs. Is that count as cheating? I think it may, but I don't think I'd be very happy with that. Well, and that, if that's the case, imagine how much easier it is 
for today's generation to cheat when you have websites like AshleyMadison.com that have 13 million people yeah. looking to have an affair. We when you can go on your iPhone and find a hookup. <clears throat> Oh, it sounds so romantic, Using GPS doesn't it? Tracking it's all location. written down um, here in the book, if you'd like. I was say, if you find your husband reading this, then be very suspicious. <laughs> we'll, uh, if you both hang around, because we'll, we'll love to get you in the in the hub and yeah. uh, see what some of the reaction is to, to what we've just been talking about. So if you've got an extra five minutes or so, right. then, then hang around. Thank uh, Denise, you. for the moment, thank you very much indeed. Right, coming out, Russell Grant and Sophie Evans are here talking about The Wizard of Oz. That's right, after the break. What have you had in so far, Colleen? Well, the debate is raging on in here, and I'm joined by Eric and Denise, of course, um, about your new book that's out, The, Monog what's it? the Monogamy Gap. So um, I'll just read you some of the comments I've had so far. Lulu on Facebook says, I'm with Denise. Not all men are cheats, in my opinion. It's just that men are more likely to be tempted to cheat than women. Indeed. Uh, Shari on Twitter, yes, all men are cheats, she says. I'm starting to wonder where I've gone wrong to have it happen to me four times. <laughs> Oh, sorry. And uh, Charlene on Facebook, my man's eyes would never stray, and in my opinion, women can be just as bad as men. Indeed they can, that? yes. yes. Um, so it's all mixed back here. OAG on Twitter, biologically speaking, the male of any species is designed to create as many offspring as possible. Do you agree with <laughs> Possibly he is, but we've got developed brains now. Mm. We don't need to do that. Yeah, self-control, that's what I said. Steve on Facebook says, I wasn't the cheat, she was. Indeed, of course, yes. And Alison on Facebook, I had three husbands and they all cheated, so I gave up. Can't <laughs> blame her for that, really, have I? That's, oh, that's hope, that's yeah. hope. <laughs> It'll go on and on, I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks.